Special Collections and Archives, John T. Richardson Library, Chicago, Illinois, Vincentian Collections, Spring Quarter 2020. I am sorry we won't be able to meet in person this quarter. My name is Morgan McIntosh Hodgetts. I have been a member of the DePaul University Library community since 2001. I really enjoy working with faculty and students to introduce the unique collections that are part of the library's resources. There is no way to replicate the experience of seeing and handling original documents, but I do want to share some information with you about primary sources, especially our Vincentian collections. In this presentation, I will begin by showing artistic representations of St. Vincent de Paul created hundreds of years after his death. Next, I will show examples of images depicting events from his life and discuss the sources researchers consult to create books, articles, and documentaries that help place Vincent in context. Understanding Vincent's world helps us make connections between his teachings and actions and our experience today. On the third floor of the John T. Richardson Library on DePaul's Lincoln Park campus, the Special Collections and Archives Department collects, preserves, and provides access to historic materials, including sources documenting the life and times of St. Vincent de Paul. Art created in the 18th and 19th centuries endures, and it is often these images that give people their first glimpse of St. Vincent's legacy. Statues, paintings, and music were commissioned by patrons of the arts who recognized the inspiring narrative of St. Vincent's life. Many images of St. Vincent de Paul, the Apostle of Charity, features infants and small children symbolizing his devotion and work to organize assistance for those in need. The 1798 statue by Jean-Baptiste Stioff is credited as the first depiction of Vincent with foundlings. A vase decorated with a copy of a well-known painting of Vincent helping the foundlings by Nicolas André Montier is described for DePaul Art Museum exhibit. The restoration of the conservative Bourbon monarchies after the fall of Napoleon, brothers Louis XVIII and Charles X used royal patronage and the Paris Salon to encourage the production of religious art that would reinforce the nation's return to Catholicism. Nicolas André Monciau was a French painter known for his fine drawing style, use of color, neoclassicism, and historical subject matter. A religious subject such as this portrayal of St. Vincent de Paul was atypical for Monciau, but it fits into the trajectory of his career and patronage during the Restoration. In this atmospheric painting, Vincent walks at dusk through the snow-covered streets of Paris. He has already rescued one foundling whom he carries in his arms. As he turns the corner, he happens upon another abandoned toddler lying exposed to the elements. In the background, a woman carefully observes the scene. Traditional interpretations suggest she is the mother of the abandoned toddler and has lingered to be sure that her child is rescued. In this picture, Vincent has just shifted the first baby into one arm and begins to bend his knee to attend the infant on the ground. The triangular arrangement of Vincent and the children owes its inspiration to a statue created by Jean-Baptiste Stout just before the French Revolution, considered the prototypical depiction of Vincent with foundlings. Based on its size, design, and quality, this urn was designed to be a showpiece for a wealthy buyer with religious sensibility. In 1875, Ferdinand Beaufranchet composed an oratorio, a musical work for orchestra and a choir. I will play a short clip from the song titled La Enfant en Bandit.
Singing about St. Vincent, the English translation of the choir's verses is as follows, quote, hope of the poor in the midst of their distress. In your goodness, you are their father. Through the brilliant example of your charity, you encourage the rich to share their wealth. As you pass the group of smiling, lovable, but weak infants, see their shining faces and hear their joyful cries. And when night comes, their sweet mothers will put them to sleep. They will close their trembling eyes and kiss their rosy foreheads. In your time, these tiny infants were abandoned without pity at every turn. You promptly and generously responded. You built a charitable asylum for the orphan and the indigent. The image of Vincent portrayed in Stouff's 1798 statue, Monsieur's 1817 painting, and Beaufranche's 1875 music, reveals the desire to commemorate his works and deeds. But there are limitations to knowing Vincent only through these beautiful representations. How does someone gain a more complete picture of Vincent's life hundreds of years before? One method is to seek out imagery based on actual events documented in letters, journals, and reports that were created during Vincent's life. Although all of the prayer cards you see here were made after Vincent's death, Vincentian historians can trace these events to accounts described in historical documents. Students, faculty, and researchers benefit from the expertise of Vincentian historians, including Father Edward Udovic, who discusses the importance of analyzing a wide range of primary sources. Studying maps of Paris and regions in France shed light on the places Vincent lived and worked. In many of Vincent's letters, he refers to books that influenced and inspired him. While modern editions and translations of Francis de Sales and Francis Xavier are widely available, the copies we have were printed in 1647 and 1660. Seeing and holding books similar to the copies Vincent would have had on his bookshelf helped bring us closer to the past. DePaul University is home to the Vincentian Studies Institute, which celebrated its 40th anniversary in 2019. The Institute's Vincentian Heritage Journal publishes the work of scholars, including Father John Reibolt, whose research sheds light on the historical and spiritual heritage of the wide-ranging Vincentian family. While using sources such as maps and books and images to understand the environment and influences of historical figures is important, Reading the actual writings of the person you are studying is crucial to researching their life. Special Collections and Archives is fortunate to have a small collection of handwritten letters of Vincent de Paul, Louise de Marriac, and Elizabeth Seton. Because these letters were saved and preserved by those who knew the writers, they are not lost, but remain a part of the historical record. These documents are the most personal items we have for students, faculty, and researchers to study these great Vincentian leaders. In the introduction to the 1999 book titled Letters of the Century, editors Lisa Grundwald and Stephen J. Adler write a lovely description of the captivating power of a letter. The letters they selected from their book date from 1900 to 1999 but I think their insight speaks to readers who pick up a letter written at any point in history. Quote from the introduction. We may think we've heard the whole story, but that story resonates more deeply when we read letters. Part of the reason for that resonance is the immediacy of letters. Letters are what history sounds like when it is still part of everyday life. Lord Byron wrote, letter writing is the only device for combining solitude and good company. And the safety of that combination seems to inspire the courage to be honest. Dreams are confided in letters, both the nightmares and the hopes. Love is confided in letters, without fear of hearing laughter. A lot of the joy of reading, come, reading letters comes from hearing the ring of unaffected truth. 
People describe things in letters in passing that they take for granted, but we need not. For example, letters in this book that we selected include descriptions of a pack of wolves passing a schoolhouse near the shack of a lone woman homesteader, or the code words for ordering liquor during the days of prohibition are also shared. These are the little details that refresh even the most familiar events. End quote from the introduction of Letters of the Century, edited by Lisa Grundwald and Stephen J. Adler. Due to COVID-19, the library is currently closed to ensure the safety of our DePaul community. However, you, are, you still have an opportunity to engage with unique primary sources from our collections. Using Google Forms, I've created an activity for you to think and reflect on the accomplishments of Vincentian leaders using primary sources. If you have any difficulty accessing the form, which is available on your Class D2L site, please do not hesitate to email me. I hope that when the COVID-19 closure ends, you will be inspired to visit special collections and archives on the third floor of the Richardson Library. Thank you.